Well, hello. Today we're going to work on three holiday projects, all loaded on the quilting machine at the same time. Dear Helen Squire tells us about pattern selection, and I show you how one pattern can lead to many different quilting ideas. So stay tuned. I'll be showing you some time-saving tips as we work on these holiday projects later, and we'll also be taking a look at the Comparison Quilt Exhibit. But first, Helen Squire is here to talk with us about pattern selection. Welcome, Helen. Hi. I'm so excited to have you on the show. My pleasure to be here, Linda. It's a pleasure to be working with you. I have admired, I mean, your books have been out for years about these patterns, and you just have this eye of what to know to put on the quilts, and so hopefully you'll be able to share some of that with us and give us some ideas on how we can make these patterns fit on our quilts. So. Thank you. Uh, that's one of the reasons in Helen's Hints, I give more than just, here's the pattern. I tell them mm -hmm. about scale and proportion, and I tell them some design rules. And one of them, when they say to me, what should I put on my quilt is, well, what type of quilt is it? Because if it's a geometric quilt, we want to look for a flowing quilting design. Mm -hmm. If it's a flowing quilt, like a um, Rose of Sharon, we want to put a grid or a straight line with it. So we're always using those design elements. Now when you have a pattern like the one on the table here, which is a variation on a Jacob's Ladder, it's in that category, it has many different names. If that pattern had been made in one of these two fabrics, especially that swirly one, the design rule of straight lines and curved lines would have been answered. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what we choose to put on our quilting design, uh, quilting top, is already based on what fabrics you've used. Okay, so okay. we need to look at the fabric. Fabric first, okay. then the pattern Then the pattern itself. design of the mm -hmm. quilt. And the okay. area to be quilted. Now the one on here has many different names. Um, let's see, it's Jacob Ladders, Jacob Ladder. uh, Tail of Benjamin's Kite, it's Stepping Stones, Wagon Wheels, but one of the names I like is one that's called Broken Sugar Dish. Sugar bowl. <laughs> That's cute. Uh huh. So the pattern that I've used here, which was in the recent issue of the magazine, is what I would call sponge sugar. You know that mm -hmm. delicate look there. Mm -hmm. So I've selected a pattern that I like. I took it from the uh, pages here, and the first thing I have to do before I can get that block, because that wasn't the pattern that was given to me, is make multiple copies. Okay. Okay. And you have to have them facing left or right. Okay. All right, so they're mirror image. Mm -hmm. okay. Mirror image. Now, having done that, we're able to, and this is just more of the same, facing left and right. Okay. I've stapled it together. I would normally staple it on both sides. Now, that just takes a minute to line it up. This is what I would do in a class. And it's so nice when the stapler works. Because so they're right sides together, and right you're just stapling together. that together. I'm just giving myself a larger area to work with. I'm also measuring accurately, mm -hmm. and usually I just rip this <laughs> because that works just as well, but we'll do it very professionally today. Okay, now what I've done is I have multiple copies of the same pattern, some facing left, some facing right. Okay. At this point, and this is the whole trick of this, is you take it and you roll it down and you stop at the place that you think you like the design. So having done that, I would make a new copy of it and I would make four repeats mm -hmm. and fold it in. Now here's a block, but maybe that block, because this is an old quilt top, is not nine inches square. It's nine by nine and a half. Nine that happens a, a lot, and it's not just old quilts. Mm -mm. It's <laughs> oh, it's new quilts too. Yes. Okay. Yes. So when we go to addition it, we want we might want to take the pattern and have selected one that's adjustable. That I could have stretched this out oh. a little bit more, or closed it in a little bit that's more. That's a great idea because when I want to like echo around the outside, I still want to be the same distance from the edge of the square. Right. People will notice so that. This is excellent. But they won't notice this part of it and you would have your coordinated border that went with it mm -hmm. if that's what you wanted to use there with the look. corner that looks to and that's like the that. pattern that that's we're working great. and by the way that's the pattern I think you're going to be yes this is the one that will be offered on the website so the viewers can download that free okay, okay. I have something else I'd like to show you though. okay 
this is what I'm really known for, and that's a muslin master. And I think it's because I was, I'm a graduate of the Fashion Institute in New York. I used to work in the garment center, and I'm used to feely, touchy mm -hmm. fabric. Mm -hmm. So at the moment when I think I know what I want to do, I'll stop and I'll design one-fourth, one quarter of the quilt. Okay, so you don't need the muslin yeah. to be the whole thing. Just Plus two inches, though. Okay. And the two inches is, am I going to reverse the pattern, rotate mm -hmm. it, flop it, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'll work it out. Now, I put this over the pattern. We had the quilt top, and I've traced out the area to be quilted. Here are my blocks. Here is the open area, and notice how it goes into negative space. Yes. You know, yes. some people think you're going, one pattern is going to fit in there exactly. It doesn't work that mm -mm. way. So we see a couple of the nice things in here, and I'm going to reach over and grab a tissue paper because I'm going to mark this with my actual finished decision. Okay. 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 So right now I'm still. So you're going to once you get this, you're going to mark it. I will mark this probably in indelible ink. And when they ask what's indelible, when it smells, when the pen smells, <laughs> okay. it's not going to come out. Okay. But right now I'm still at the planning time, mm -hmm. so I marked off this. It doesn't have to be very accurate. Uh, it's just a almost like a scrap paper. Okay. okay? But you can see through to see. I can see. see through to see the areas. Now, seam mm -hmm. allowance is very important and, you know, how seams are pressed. But right now, we're just going to consider what was the lineal look of this? What was, what was the image that we liked? And I would really like to connect because the eye thinks it wants to connect this mm -hmm. Jacob's Ladder. Mm -hmm. But if I took a ruler and ruled it here, you know, this line is here, this is there, that's there, and it would not be straight. Right. So we're going to quilt it so it looks straight Okay. by using something, and this is, you know, Sue Patton. Mm -hmm. I do. She has a wonderful idea of where you fill in a given space by hitting the mark. So I would have determined that the space from here to there, which would have been my straight line if mm -hmm. that was possible, mm -hmm. I'm going to do a curvy shape along that space. By using the quilt as your guide. I see. And you remember that first fabric we showed you mm -hmm. where the curls went with the mm -hmm. straight lines. Mm -hmm. So we've answered every design principle. We've had, we have a fudge factor. Mm -hmm. We have something we can adapt. And it's going to look nice. And it's going to be easy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and like fast. That. And fast. So we have that. That's the major part. Now, if you let me show you another book. This is one. I'm their editor. That's oh, why okay. I'm allowed to say they're wonderful. Because they're <laughs> they wonderful are. editor. They are. <laughs> They've been on our show. So. Oh, good. Yes. Thanks. All right. Now, we have that blank space that we were using there with the sugar bowl uh -huh. pattern. If you wanted to see a book, see a pattern you want, there's wonderful proportion wheels. And you take the size that you have, and you dial up the size that you want, and then you look through the window, and that's a reduction. And that tells you how to reduce it. And you can get those... Quilt and shops. And quilt like shops are very nice. Mail order Copy companies. Places. Copy okay. places and art supplies. Okay. I have large ones because I can see better, but they come in all sizes. Okay. The math is excellent. I firmly Great. recommend it. So we have a design we want, but what has happened here, a couple of things. We have the markless way of doing it, and that, again, is using a tool that Pam Clark has. And what this one does is you would put it over your quilt top mm -hmm. and use a pounce and just kind of scrub over just lightly because we really don't want to mark the diagonal lines. Right. We just want to divide the space up. So that your eye has a reference. Right. When that brushes clicking. off. Mm -hmm. Okay? And Because we're, we're not marking the pattern. We don't mind that it disappears. Mm -hmm. This is just telling you how to divide it into your pie sections. Mm -hmm. Now, when I turn and compare... Pam's pattern to Sue's pattern, you'll notice that there's a little bit of a contrast. This one here, I'm going to have to use French curves or a, uh, you know, French curves and rulers to get my shape perfectly. Okay. And now I have a fat curvy line and I have a ribbon curly line. Which are different. And I would have to decide which one I which wanted. Which one you wanted. Because you wouldn't want to use the same. It would be a little bit too much, too okay. much of a contrast. But once you have that, you have a markless way of getting the design on there. You have um, a very good idea of what you want to do. And now you would make your muslin marker. Okay. Because when you make your muslin marker, I'm going to rattle this over here, you will notice that instead of being a straight line, I have, this is the actual quilt. Oh, okay. You put a dotted line there so you can actually so see. So I know I don't want to mark the pattern here. I don't want to call attention to that. I want to pick a different pattern that's not going to 
fudge factor. Nobody later on is going to know that this ribbon is a little, a little longer yes. or a little shorter. Okay. Right. And that's how you do it. You pick your pattern. You use various ways of marking it. You can combine ideas from different places. Mm -hmm. Use tools. Use your own imagination. And use contrast. Right. And the only thing you have to do mm -hmm. is finish the quilt. Thank you so much. That's Those hints enough. were great. That's right. I'm dear Helen. <laughs> appreciate you Thank for you being here. Thank you very much, dear Linda. When you work on anything creatively, people ask you, where do you get your ideas? In quilting, this question becomes, how do you know what to put on the quilt? Good ideas for quilting can come from the quilt itself, your own experience, knowing how to use traditional techniques, or knowing how to break the rules. You can also be inspired by what other quilters have done. And I've invited Karen Nelson from my area to tell about a comparison quilt exhibit. Welcome, Karen. Thanks, Linda. I'm glad to be here. Great. Tell us about this comparison quilt exhibit. Well, we have a, a local quilt guild that's called the Professional Long Arm Quilters Guild, otherwise known as PLAC, and we meet quarterly. We did our first quilt show last August of 2006 and decided we wanted to do an exhibit to show what a difference quilting can make on the quilt. So we called our exhibit exactly the same, only different. That's cute. And we all prepared the same quilt top but we were inspired differently to create our own masterpiece and quilt it however we wanted to. And as you can see, the sky was the limit as to the creativity that these ladies and gentlemen put into their quilts. I, I was amazed when I saw it. I, I, it's just phenomenal. The reaction from the public was great. I continue to get comments from people who attended the show that were so impressed by that exhibit. It was just amazing to see what a difference, a different style of quilting could make on each quilt. Even the thread choices made, made a huge difference, and, and each one is, is its own style, isn't it? Yes, we all had our options to choose whatever thread we wanted to use, whatever embellishments, batting, however we wanted to create that quilt and make it our own, we were able to do. Now, is this, is this, where does this go? Do, the, do they just take their quilts home, or what are you doing with this exhibit? We actually have the exhibit put together, and we want to make it available to guilds to have as a exhibit at a meeting, or even to put it in as exhibit as our show. Hopefully, in two more years, we'll do a new one. Thank you, Karen, for coming and letting us see this quilt exhibit today. I'm working on three projects today, all at the same time. I decided since I needed to get them all finished, quickly, the holidays were coming up, and I was going to use the same thread colors basically on all of them. I loaded them all at the same time. Since they were wall hangings, they would be against the wall, and I chose um, just a nice flannel for the back, put my flannel on, my batting on, and then I loaded my quilts, just stitching across the top and then doing the stabilizing on each one, so then I could come back and finish the freehand ideas. The first one I'm going to work on is called Elves on a Roll, and I've nearly got it completed. The first area is going to be um, some finishing here of the cross hatching. Now I have an extended base on my machine which comes out like this, so you can see I have a little bit more surface to work with. And I'm going to use my ruler so that my lines can be straight. And I've, I've already completed some of the cross hatching in here, so I'll go down, bring my thread up, and take just a couple of extra little stitches there to secure it. Put my ruler where I want it, and I'm lining my ruler up with the edge of the, uh, just a quarter inch away from the tip of these other squares. And that's going to put me right in line where I need to be. And I will just stitch over here. And then I'll put the ruler on the back like this. Stitch across. And then this way. Now you never want to cross your ruler in f on the right side of the needle because that could be very dangerous for your hand. So you want to make sure that you keep this on the left side as you're working with it. And again, I'm, I'm putting this a quarter of an inch inside of these tips on these other squares to give me my line to quilt. And down here like this. Now I want to finish putting the lines in these squares 
and I don't want to have to stop and start so many times. It's better for me to actually stitch in the ditch as I follow this line down. I was right in that seam. Very important, if you're going to stitch in the ditch, it's got to be in the ditch. So I line it up like this, pull it down to the corner, and I don't want to stop right in the corner. What I want to do is take little tiny stitches one way in the ditch, and I'm thinking in my mind 15 to 20 stitches. So those were very close stitches. Go down and bring up my thread, and then I can trim both of these threads off. So that completed the cross hatching there. Now I have only one side left on this border, and I'm going to put a beautiful freehand leaf design in here. The first thing I'm going to do is put the stem in, and I notice on this one that I swung out a little bit this way and then back in. So on this one, just to make it symmetrical, I'm going to swing out a little bit this way, and I'll show you. I'm putting in my stem now. So I swing out, and then over, and then I'll come to a point here, and back, and then put in a stem. And that's what I'm going to do for the rest of them. I'm going to go into manual. I'll be able to sew a little bit faster. There we go. Point and down and a stem. Follow this stem down, the original stem that I placed in there. I follow it. All of the leaves have a direction. They're pointing out to the end of this motif and back over, and you see I'm filling in the entire area there, making sure that I fill that in with the quilting. As I come to the middle, I'm going to put a, a leaf that's rather straight, right in the middle like that. Then I'm going to come back out. I'm making this stem about a quarter of an inch away from the other one. And I need to reach out into this area with the leaf so I fill in that area, put the stem in, and then the very same thing. I come about a quarter of an inch away from this edge because I will be binding it and I don't want that leaf motif to go underneath that binding. I want to make sure that I can see the entire leaf. So when you get near the edge, you want to make sure that you don't take the leaf clear to the edge. And that fills in that entire area. It really is a very pretty motif to put in the border. And this is kind of a dead end border because it ends at each side. And so it's particularly good to put in an area such as that. The leaves are going both directions. And I'll end right here and I will do my little stitches again. I just kind of put my finger there to just gently prod the machine to move just a stitch at a time. This little wall hanging is called Festive Poinsettia, and it is simply fused on the, onto the top, and then there's a hot ribbon technique around the edges of it. So what I'm doing is I'm outlining around the edges and I'm going to um, turn this to a little bit slower pace so that I can I can use my handles down here once I turn on my machine like this I can use my handles like this to stay really close on the edge on the inside of this leaf and so even though it's fused on that wouldn't stay if we were going to wash the quilt and so I have to nail that down right on the inside of that hot ribbon. Um, it's ribbon now, but it's, it's a, applied with the hot uh, iron. Now I'm going to go inside of that leaf like this and just put some veins to make it look like a real leaf. And that also makes sure that it's really stitched down well. I've rolled the quilt so I can work on it very close to myself. I don't want to have to lean over and work in an in awkward position. And I have done half of this holly border, which is really cute and so easy to do freehand. And so I want to show you how I'm going to complete that. I'm going to start here down at the end in the corner where I already have some little circles for the berries. 
and then I'll just come along like this and I just do a point, point, come over like this and go round, round, point, point, round, round, point, point, putting the little berries in and getting those holly leaves in. And that is all I need in that little border. And I'm using the contrasting thread so it will really show up. And around the corner, I might even want to put an extra berry in it. Not a problem at all. And then one more berry there, and we're done. So we've, got, we've completed all the colored thread here. OK, I've moved over to the bear paw now. And it's got a cute little bear and a tree applique on it to make it a Christmas festive little wall hanging. And all I wanted to do is put a cute little interesting design in this tree. And I decided instead of the traditional, you know, points, I'm going to come in and put a feather in here. So you can see how I'm finishing that. I just reach out. And that kind of makes it more of a quilty look instead of, we don't always have to have everything look so real, you know? We can put feathers anywhere we want to because we're quilters. And this will just complete this little tree. And then I'm ready to change my color of thread. And I'll show you how we can finish these projects off with the next color. I decided just to do a simple stipple around the edges of this. And I wanted to just give you the rules if you haven't done stippling before. You do everything curved, no points, and you try not to cross lines. This is not a real tiny stipple. Sometimes you see what they call a micro stipple, very, very tiny, and you can't do it this fast. And you have to, you know, do it slow and sit down and relax. But this works very well um, in many, many areas. And once you get the hang of it, it's real easy to do. That completes that area. And now I'm going to roll again. I'll be right back. I've moved back to the third quilt, which is the festive poinsettia. And I'm going to put a feather in this area. Instead of just stippling, I thought it deserved just something a little bit more elegant. So I'm going to start with the stem. And I'll come out here like this. And I have to fill in this whole area. So I've curved that all the way around. And I'm coming back like this. And then I'll start filling in with my feathers. And I have to make sure that I fill in all the way around. As soon as I get this turned like this, I'm going to start doing coming out like this, coming around the edge of the feather, coming right back around it like this and then down. I like to call these stacked feathers because you trace along the top of the feather. So you come out like this with your feather design, trace around it, and then come back with your feather like this. Come out here like this, trace right around, and then back like this. These handles make it nice because you can have your hands a little bit closer to exactly what you are stitching. Come around like this. And then I'm going to go into my traditional feather and reach out into all of these areas like this. I'm going to come back around. It's OK to do on that stem again and start my stack feathers over here. The nice thing about the stack feathers is you can come right over on top of the last feather. And you see how I can curve that around? and then come back into that area where the stem is and follow the original stem that I, that I placed in there first. So around like this, follow it around, and that completes that little wall hanging. So one more row, and I'll be right back. I'm back onto the first quilt, Elves on a Roll, because I have this color of thread in here. And I have a round area here with a little applique in the middle. And the design that I'm going to do around is called Pattern Meandering. And it just gives it this kind of effect, just like pops right out of the quilt. And you can see that on the quilt. But what you want to keep in mind, you have your applique here and you have this area, is that you want to keep your, your pattern meandering completely perpendicular to this motif that you have in the center. And so I want to just kind of illustrate that so you could 
see what I'm doing. I also need to uh, outline the elf, and I just have a little bit left to do on that. And I'll show you how I do that very effectively. I like to use the applique helper, and that allows my left hand to be even closer down here. As I go around this motif and I outline it, you see my left hand can just guide it right around that applique. It also, um, because it's a flat surface, tends to just flatten out the applique to make it even easier for you to go around so it doesn't stand up. Okay, I went around the applique so I can take this off and then I'll just finish that meandering technique. And you can see at the bottom of this, I'm gonna be straight up and down. It goes really fast. And then as I come around here, I'm using that thinking perpendicular. So that's the way I want it to look. And I'm gonna follow this over here, come around like this, and then just fill in the rest of this area, keeping it thinking in my mind perpendicular to the applique and we're finished. So, we can take a look at these cute projects, and I hope that you've learned some techniques that you'll be able to use and see how quick and fast they are. Next time on Linda's Long Arm Quilting, we'll have a visit from one of the leading quilters in the world, Harry Walner. I'll show you how to make a quick, easy, and time-saving pincushion. And I'll show you some fast and fun freehand techniques on this Little House of Quilts with Little Quilts project. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it. See you next time. <laughs>